Well, thank you all for joining tonight. My name is Ben Buckaloo. I am privileged to serve as Director of Field Service for the Linear Council. And I had a great partner in Bert Bender, uh, who is our council new member coordinator. And Bert, I want to make sure I give you proper things. You're a retired partner from Austin and Bird, uh, which is a prominent law firm here in Atlanta. And uh, I would say is a uh, expert in Cub Scouting and training and many other things. But, uh, you know, Bert and I were talking and uh, we do a lot of great things in the Atlanta Air Council and across the country. And uh, the one of the big things that we are used to having and you all may have attended is the program kickoff. And that typically happens, I think, April. Is that right, Bert? Uh, Time I frame? think it, it's done. It's It's been backed up into March in recent years. OK, but uh, the idea behind that is to help you as PACs plan your calendar year uh, as you if you've been on anything or watching any the videos that Bert and I've done. We talk about year round recruiting and the importance of that to have a balanced calendar. Um, and so we know that a lot of planning starts now and into the summer. And we don't want you just to be focused on August as we know that's a crazy time. So Bert was like, well, why don't we do something for the PACs? And I was like, OK, let's do it. So that's what we're here tonight. Um, if you have some friends, colleagues, and some uh, partners that aren't able to join it, the good news is it's recorded. Uh, most likely, I would say no later than Monday, this will be uploaded to our YouTube channel, and you can share. And if you don't like my voice or Bert's voice, what do you could make it go a little faster on YouTube so you can cut this out. Uh, <laughs> but tonight, we are budgeted for, I think, 52, 53 minutes, but we want to keep it ended before 8 o'clock. Uh, so um, I don't want to hold us any more other than just in my part of saying thank you, Bert. Thank you, everybody, for what you do in scouting and the impact that you're having. Without you all, we wouldn't have a purpose of being here. So I'll turn it over to Bert to take it away. Okay, with that, let's uh, start this program on playing your best year ever in Cub Scouting. And I hope it uh, it will be your best year ever. As Ben indicated, you know, I'm my role is uh, council new member coordinator, which means I've been uh, helping to promote assets like the steps for successful and su sustainable recruiting and planning a year, having a great calendar of activities is step number one. So you are right here in the activity calendar. We will get into some steps about that, but also even more information about how to do the necessary planning, administrative elements, and provide some help. So our takeaways that we hope we leave you with tonight are going to be, uh, number one, some ad advidance on activities, uh, both you know safety stuff from scouting, but also why it's important. And spoiler alert, it's why families join and it's why they stay with the program. So we will share a menu of activity ideas to help you when you get together with your other PAC leaders, build your calendar of activities for the coming year. We'll talk about some planning methods to get people involved, the importance of surveys and sharing ideas and collecting ideas from everyone. We want to share a few tips on how to help your local den leader, because that's the hardest job and the one that has the greatest uh, opportunity for success when you're dealing with kids and families. We will talk about some budget issues and also uh, unit awards and other tools and resources for all of this. So uh, we do have a resource page and it will get updated after this, um, after this program is, is done and launches on the YouTube page. And it'll have uh, links to elements that we talk about here in the program and links to resources that you can use to deliver your program. Our goal is that you build your best plan, not the one best plan because all scouting is local. All of your resources are local and what you do in your local neighborhoods, in your local school, your local community is gonna be better than something that could be uh, drawn up uh, on the in the penthouse or the volunteer service center. Our second goal is to keep it simple and make it fun. and Sometimes scouting is complicated. Sometimes it's keep it complicated, make everything hard. We would rather you do kiss Smith and not kick me. So that's our goal. Simple, fun, make scouting easy so it's more accessible. Third goal sort of lines up with fun and simple and easy is if it's fun for kids, fun for families and safe, do it. It's Cub Scouting. 
So take advantage of your local resources. We will be hitting that because we want to have a community. We're not here just to talk about how to have a great uh, one hour every other week to deliver for kids. We are here to develop stronger families through scouting, develop a community where you actually are getting people together. If you follow any thinking and writing and reading about parents and families and churches and community organizations, you know that compared to years ago, there is a great lack of those connections. So building stronger families through scouting in a community of a pack, in a community of a den, is going to be a very powerful uh, improvement in our society, especially when you consider what we stand for, what our aims are, building character, making better citizens, getting kids on a path to personal fitness through their life, building on a program that has methods like the ideals and the 12 points of the scout law, belonging to a community, those kids involved in the in the den, and then ultimately when they move up into a scouts BSA troop and a patrol, uh, the achievements that they'll get by working on the advancement opportunities in Cub Scouting, the benefits you have through family involvement and doing the fun activities, including serving the community, which is an important thing to uh, get as part of the, uh, the, the kids and the families uh, approach to living in this Atlanta metro area. Last method, the uniform. Well, when we're out there serving the community and doing activities, people will see who we are and we can be proud of the activities and awards we've received and our kids hopefully will uh, get more out of the program as a result. A big emphasis that I think we should all have is that scouting is outing. Be an outdoor den, be an outdoor pack, make that our brand because Cub Scouting should not be Cub Schooling. It should be something that we are, are doing that is looked forward to, and a lot of kids are not looking forward to an extra hour of school. So let's take a look at one activity plan. This is an annual activity plan that's looking at what you might do as your big pack activities month by month. And it's not the only approach. Let's start with April. You might be relaxing right now as March Madness is beginning tonight. And uh, thinking we we can now relax. Everybody's ranked up. Let's do something. Let's maybe have a cookout. That's one thing you could do. We'll see some more ideas as we go along. In May, you might do just fun stuff like a kite fly or a rocket launch. You might have an end of the year party. You might have a blue and gold banquet and uh, stick a pin in that. We're going to circle back to that idea in a second. In June, school's out. Maybe you have a day or twilight camp. If you don't have one in your district, you can go to another district. If you don't have one uh, in a nearby district in the Atlanta Area Council, you could go to a neighboring council if they have a day or twilight camp. Uh, maybe you want to schedule an activity like a night hike. It's all up to you, whatever you and your families want to do. July, plenty of opportunities as well. There will be resident camp at Bird Adams Scout Camp. But maybe you'll do a 4th of July picnic as a den or a pack, as an opportunity for your scouting community to get together. Come August, you're going to want to get back to the pack because it's back to school time. It's time to ramp up for a new year of scouting. So maybe you'll have fun joining events that are a swim party or two or three, as long as the pool's open. Maybe you'll do a day with the Braves and make that a uh, fun get back to the pack activity. Maybe you're a sporting uh, pack. Maybe you're a sporting den. Maybe in September you want to have a field day where you do different sports. That's what your jam is. Go for it. October, maybe you're going to be intense. Maybe you're going to do hikes at camp. Maybe you're going to go to Spooky Rear or Trailblazer and camp out. Those are fabulous activities and probably the highlight of the fall for most packs. November has opportunities like there's an Atlanta Veterans Day parade annually. You could be involved in that. It's easy to sign up. You want something pure fun? Maybe marbles, if that's your thing. If it's not your thing, we'll have some slides in a bit that show you other opportunities. December is a great time for celebrating the holidays. So a holiday party where you feature maybe family cooking, your favorite recipes, that would be a, an excellent event to have. Some packs, many packs do a big overnight in January. Maybe you go uh, 
to Patriots Point or Mobile to be sleep on the aircraft carrier or the battleship, do a zoo overnighter, space camp is an option, cave camping. Those are great things to get on the calendar, get your reservations in early so that you know you can deliver that and make that a highlight of the winter season. February can be an opportunity maybe for service like scouting for food. Somewhere in there, you're probably going to want to do a Pinewood Derby because everybody loves that. And uh, March Madness, well, it's March Madness right now. It will be next March too. Maybe you also want to add things like fishing or there will be a special opportunity next year to do uh, a day at the Scout Challenge Camp out in uh, at Bird Adams Scout Camp in March. But you could approach it a different way and have an entirely different activity plan. Maybe in April you do sports, but you do different games like croquet or pickleball or cornhole. Calvin ball, if you don't know what that is, that is basically you just roll a ball or a disc or something out onto the field and let the kids come up with what, the, what game they want to play. End of the year time, maybe you have a fishing day in May, maybe a graduation picnic where you let your scouts uh, rank up and receive maybe their new handbooks if you're providing those. You can use that as an opportunity for them to invite their classmates to the picnic and uh, join up so that they can participate in summer events like maybe going to the pool repeatedly in the summer, doing day or twilight camp. Maybe in July, you have movies on the local green town square. Uh, maybe you do that resident camp. In August, maybe you're back to school, back to the pack activities will be a bike ride or a fishing party or both. Nothing wrong with both of them. If your pack isn't really that outdoorsy just yet, maybe just do a simple walkabout in the neighborhood because just exploring the neighborhood where you live, where there are outdoor areas in every one of our uh, corners of the community is gonna be a great opportunity to get families together and do scouting. We return to the idea of getting outdoors and camping in October. And I should say that if you have families who are not really into camping that first time, if they come out Saturday morning and go home after campfire on uh, Saturday night, that's fabulous because you'll have hooked them. It's a fun activity. And if somebody's got to be crying, we would rather it be the kid in the back seat because he didn't get to camp out overnight and not mom uh, upset because she's having to share a tent or a campsite with spiders because the spiders got there first. I guarantee you that if the kid's upset about having to go home Saturday night, that family's coming back camping the next time. Uh, another approach to November, you can still get out and do a bike ride, do a bike rodeo if you're really into it, maybe add outdoor cooking. That would be fabulous. December is also a great time for service, especially to those who are elderly in our community. Uh, because they get lonely at Christmas time, at holiday time, you can really do a positive service for them. January, again, could be Pinewood Derby time, could be time to do a big trip like up to uh, North Carolina to go skiing. Some packs have done that. That's a fabulous highlight. February is a great time also to reflect on faith because we have a Scout Sunday tradition in early February at the time of the birthday of scouting. But you don't just have to have the faith element. You can have fun and, and do an overnight somewhere. In March, we have ideas here, maybe an end of winter walk, a hike to get out and about as spring comes. And maybe that's the time you'll do your blue and gold banquet. So those are just two examples. Your plan will be better when you use your resources, not only the geographic resources in your community, but the ideas of your families, because your families will know of cool places to go, cool things to do, the, you know, the games they like to play, the games they used to like to play, and that will make your program so much stronger. A tip as you plan those activities is don't forget to team up with a troop or two because you want your fifth graders to leave your pack in the spring and go off and join a Scouts BSA troop. So when you look at your activities, don't think, oh, connecting with the Scouts BSA troop is a February job. Find activities that you can do during the summer, during the fall, where it's possible to go on a hike together, to camp alongside each other, 
You may not all do the same activities, but just being nearby, sharing the same campfire and, you know, showing off what the scout troop can cook is a great way for them to entice the young ones in the front of this photo to come and join a, a troop and be part of uh, that adventure, which is where we want them all to be. Now I said, yes, stick, a, I said stick a pin in the uh, blue and gold timing. Uh, I had the idea there of a blue and gold banquet in May. And some of you may be thinking, wait a second, doesn't that have to be in February? And the answer is, nope, it's your pack. You can do a blue and gold whenever you want. Uh, frankly, the Blue and Gold Banquet became a thing in the 1950s when it was decided that would be a great birthday party for scouting. And at that time, advancement wasn't a den leader's job. It was a do-at-home job. So some people, you know, finish their rank badge in October. Others might never finish the rank badge, but they like going to den meetings and pack meetings. But the problem is, in the last couple decades, the getting all the rank work done became a den leader job. And since it's hard to recruit den leaders, it was often hard to complete rank by February because some den leaders didn't really get going until September, maybe October. And so if setting up a February blue and gold banquet on February 8th is a creating anxiety, do it later. It's okay. Uh, the scouting is kind. Scouting will forgive you if you celebrate scouting's birthday uh, later on in the spring. Uh, just do it in a way that, uh, that will make it the big party so that everybody can uh, have a good time at it and nobody is overstressing. I mentioned outdoors. Here are some ideas for things you can do outdoors. You're not gonna do all of these, but, and, but you may have somebody in your pack who is like, wow, I love geocaching. I want to hook these people on it. Same with pickleball or cornhole or croquet even. Uh, if you've got people who are really into something and want to share it with your den, your pack, go for it. Uh, a lot of times it's going to be what they used to do, BC, before children. And that's a fabulous way to build out your, your program. There was a, there was a pack in uh, South Fulton County that had parents who didn't want to be den leaders and all had excuses. One of them said, oh, I can't be with you many weekends because I'm always golfing every weekend. Another said, when you all do meeting nights, I'm bowling. And uh, others were, um, you know, tailgating. Others were into fishing. So what they did was they built their program around what those dads like to do and had tailgating dads leading an Iron Chef cooking contest. The golfing dads got people out golfing. Fishing dads took people fishing because if you're really into it as a as a hobby, as something that you do when you're you get done with work or something now that you have kids and life is settling down, you want to get back to doing, uh, go for it. You can make it part of your program. And we have so many places to go around Atlanta. So some of these cost money, some of these are free, but they're all fabulous and can really build out the calendar as a, a special activities as you uh, are trying to plan how to make your year memorable and attractive to families who want to come and do Cub Scouting with you. And again, ask where people want to go or where they've been that they might like. That's how we got some of these overnight destination examples. Like we asked parents, what do you want to do? And somebody said, uh, how about going to space camp? And I said, hey, I'm a, I'm a lawyer. I don't know what space camp is. And they said, it's a lot of fun. I said, like I tell you, I'm a lawyer. I do not know what fun is. So I will trust you that space camp is fun. And sure enough, that person who was championing space camp became our space camp organizer so that we went there and had a tremendous time. You're not always going to get a volunteer like that, but you never know. And there are many different places to go that these are a little further afield, uh, most of them. But you could set up a long-term plan while you're planning this current year. And some packs, for example, will set up a six-year rotation so that in year A, they go to space camp. In year B, they go to Patriots Point and sleep on the aircraft carrier. Year C, they'll go to 
a group camp down in the Okefenokee Swamp. Year D, they'll do an overnight at a cave in Tennessee. Uh, then they'll do an overnight in, you know, a, an aquarium in Chattanooga or a museum in Birmingham. And the final year, you know, they'll do something crazy fun like there's Wolf Creek Lodges that are basically indoor amusement parks slash, slash hotels that families can go to as a group and have a tremendous weekend. So you could build out a schedule and nobody is going to be going through the Cub Scout program and thinking, oh, not Patriots Point again, because it's going to be new uh, every six year rotation if you set it up like that. And let me just, uh, as recruiting coordinator, remind you that any fun dinner pack family event can be an opportunity for new families to come participate, literally test drive scouting and join your den, join your pack and be part of your community. So even a Pinewood Derby, you might think, oh, they can't join the Pinewood Derby that's going to be held this weekend. Well, if you have some extra cars and are willing to loan them out, you could have a visitor, a guest be part of the Pinewood Derby race if, you, if you're if you open to it, if you welcome people and find ways to get them involved as soon as they come in the door. Because if they do, you can see that the kids are going to be excited about that. And if the kids are excited about that, you're probably going to see the family join with you. So pick activities that are fun for kids, fun for families, and safe. And speaking of safe, that's the current acronym for the BSA safety program. That link would take you to the site that gives you detail about the four parts of safety, supervision, which as we know is critical to have sufficient a sufficient number of qualified, trained, trustworthy adults who will set an example for safety, who will watch over how things are being done so that the activities are done properly. It's important to have assessment. That's part of planning out a year. You know, what are we planning to do? Is it not just fun, but is it also safe? So as a result, you're not going to see Cub Scout packs go to an axe throwing event. You, in fact, even in even though a pocket knife is like a super fun thing for Cub Scouts, you're not going to see Cub Scouts using the knife until they get to third grade because that's when it's deemed they are probably capable of the fine motor skill ability to handle uh, using a pocket knife. Uh, the appropriate level of fitness and skill is important to build into your planning. So you don't want to uh, have hikes that are too long for the age level of your Cub Scouts or the fitness level of your parents. Because if either of them bonk on the trail, and are having a bad time, they're not going to want to come and do another hike again. But if you have a short, fun hike that's not breaking the uh, boundaries of the fitness ability of your parents and your kids, they'll want to come and do more. And last, equipment and environment, making sure that if you are going on a hike, you have people who have the six essentials. When you're camping, they have gear that's appropriate, that's appropriately set up so that if it rains, they're not going to get wet and knowing when to say when, so that if you see the, that the, the weather report for the, this weekend is gonna have a uh, terrible thunderstorm on Friday night, well, maybe you make the call and decide we're not going camping until Saturday so that people are in a safe environment and not going to be at risk when they are newbie campers of being in a bad weather situation. Bottom line for safety, use common sense. Simple as that. Now, I will pause and share that the Guide to Safe Scouting is really thick, and it has a lot of things in it, but it's not all safety things. Like, for example, there is the admonition that overnight camping at den levels below fourth and fifth grade is prohibited. And some people will hit you over the head with the Guide to Safe Scouting and say, that's because it's unsafe. Well, it's not unsafe. It's just a statement of what the Cub Scout Committee has decided is their program decision about camping. So if you have a pack that has only 10 first graders, because that's all who are in the pack, even though that's also a den of 10 tigers, yeah, they can camp. If you have a camp out on the calendar for this weekend, but only second grade wolf family signed up, 
you don't have to cancel it. Uh, go ahead, camp, because you're going to have a blue trained leader there. Uh, because I know you're doing that, and that's safer if you have a blue trained leader for 10 wolf families. It's even safer than if you had 60 families and only one blue trained leader. Uh, subtext of that is please get more than one blue trained leader. So let's talk about routes to create your plant. Um, some packs, sometimes too many packs, look at what we did last year and say, let's plan a sequel to that. And I will tell you that is a big money maker in Hollywood, but it is not necessarily fun in Cub Scouting because you might want to do new things. You might think, well, he had something on those earlier slides. Maybe we need to do one of those calendars. And the answer is, nope. If you have entirely different activities, go for those. You might say, well, let's let the Cub Master and Committee Chair tell us what the plan is, and we'll just do what they say. That's one approach. But we think the best approach is to invite everybody, all leaders and parents, to share ideas about what they'd like to do. They only have so much time to be parents to their kids and parents in the pack. So get ideas and look at what you have been doing and ask, do you still want to be doing it? Because there are some things we do that are hard and we wonder why do we do it? And just because we always did it doesn't necessarily mean that's how we should continue if we're trying to have our best year ever. I'm gonna actually go uh, graphical on you and tell you that if you're trying to keep it simple and make it fun, you wanna be up here in the upper right quadrant that's fun and simple because it's easy to do and it's super fun. Now there's some things that are fun, but they're hard to do like setting up a Pinewood Derby track and running the Pinewood Derby software. And so if it's super fun, but it takes some work, go for it. Uh, other things may not be fun, but they may be simple. So you might have a tradition of pack meetings where it's pretty simple to do because all you're doing is announcement, announcements and maybe some awards. And if somebody did come up with a skit, maybe you're putting that on, but you may have people in the audience going, this wasn't really fun. Uh, please never be down in the left-hand quadrant, which is not fun, but also hard. So ask your families, what do you like? Uh, what should we keep doing? What don't we like? Uh, what should we stop doing? Those are That's good feedback to have. It's also important to think about your cost. Uh, there are some things that are, Fun and cheap, those are great to do. Uh, that's There's no financial barrier if you're going somewhere free. Some things are fun, but cost a lot of money, like Disney World is super fun, but it may keep a lot of families from going with you on a spring break trip to Disney World as a den or a pack. Uh, so you've got to find a balance somewhere so that you're not causing families to back away because Cub Scouting is costing too much. But the good news is, there's lots of places that are free or cheap around Atlanta that you can really get into and fill out your calendar very well. Now, some of you are probably wondering, why do I have Marie Kondo on this slide? And why do I care about the KonMari method? I think it's a good tool to use to evaluate your pack calendar. Because in the KonMari method, it's originally started with decluttering your house, where you look at all the items that are in your house and ask with each one, does it spark joy? And if it doesn't, you thank it for its service and let it go. If it does spark joy, keep it because obviously you like it. And the same thing can go with your pack calendar. If there are things about like the way you do a Pinewood Derby that don't spark joy because you're saying, wow, people fight about every about that issue every year, you may want to find a different way to handle that, a different way to run the Pinewood Derby in order to have more joy come out of the events. Uh, so consider that when you're doing your planning, just because you've always done an event a certain way doesn't mean you have to keep doing it that way, because the more joy you have, the more fun you have, the more participation you'll have, the more retention you'll have, and the more these two on this slide are going to pitch your pack in your den, promote it peer-to-peer, parent-to-parent, kid-to-kid, so that you have more 
and better families come into your PAC to participate. A little bit about the planning process. Uh, if you use the, you know, the chalk approach, the PAC chair is going to take the lead on that as the sort of the, the, the lead, leader of the board of directors of your PAC, but working very closely with Cubmaster Den Leaders Assistance and the rest of the committee, but also with parents, just because someone's not a registered leader doesn't mean they shouldn't participate. And some PACs will still be of the old mindset of, well, there's committee people and there's uh, youth facing leader people and the youth facing leader people shouldn't be in committee meetings. But actually, if you follow online training in the BSA, Cup Masters, Den Leaders and Assistants are automatically part of the PAC committee which only makes sense because they're the ones who the committee is relying on to deliver the program to the youth. So it only makes sense to bring them in the tent and let them be a big part of the process. So when to hold a PAC program planning conference? Now it's not a bad time because during this springtime when you're relaxing and retooling, you should begin to start your school year, new program year planning. And you can now develop and share summer and fall highlights, what we're going to do so that people know this is a full year round pack. You can finalize everything for sure in May, June, maybe July, so that as you go into the school year, the program year, you are sharing with people a full year of activities since they're gonna be buying a full year of BSA registration. Just don't forget to be sure that in the winter time that you update again because we have no idea what activities are gonna be on board for next spring and the summer of 25. That's only gonna become apparent by the uh, winter, maybe early spring next year. So that has to be a continual process to be sure that we're getting the uh, activities on our, on our menu that we wanna participate in. As you do planning, it's important not to just to go in with a blank chart or a blank calendar, but identify some key dates that we want to either hit or avoid or plan around. So school calendars, know when your open house meet and greet, meet the teacher day is, because that should be a primo recruiting day for you when you can do peer-to-peer, parent-to-parent, kid-to-kid recruiting. Know when school starts, know when the holidays are, because you don't want to make registration for a spooky re weekend when it turns out uh, half the pack is gonna be on vacation. Uh, look at council and district calendars so that you see key events you wanna participate in. Also training opportunities like University of Scouting where you would not want to have a conflict because your parents and leaders can go get more knowledge at an event like that and bring back better program for the following uh, months to come. Keep in mind other organization calendars, there's going to be church festivals and activities where you might have a real good opportunity to participate. Same thing with community events like uh, community festivals, parades, movies on the square. And don't forget religious holidays, even minor religions. You don't want to block somebody out of participating or feel unwelcome because there's a pack event that's opposite a major religious holiday. I mentioned council and district events. We now have a year round program planning guide on the Atlanta area council page where you can just click on a month and it will show you what the planned key events are that you might want to add to your PAC calendar. So it'll show you, you know, when events like Spooky Re are coming up, uh, when Winter Jubilee, hopefully that will pop up when they start populating 20, uh, 2025 on there. And that will give you some items that you may wanna put on your calendar, put on your survey, put it up to your uh, parent leader committee meeting and see if this is something that our PAC wants to do. Also wonderful is surveys because you can get feedback from parents. What did they like? What did they not like? How to change if we do something again? Uh, I mentioned Pinewood Derbies. It could be how you do campouts. You know, we want to change the way we do campout cooking. Uh, are we, you know, tired of going to the same 
uh, camp in October, do we want to mix it up some? So what would we like to do? Where would we like to go? When would we like to go? And you may get a lot of your answers if you saturate your families and get feedback from them. Now, here's another myth. There are some people that think we're only allowed to camp at Atlanta Area Council camps. Um, ben, Jason, please put your fingers in your ears. No, you can attend events and camp at other councils. And uh, frankly, you know, that's going to be useful if, in fact, you've got families who say, oh, Bird Adams again. Now, granted, Bird Adams is great. I love Bird Adams. Our spookery is great, but it is okay to scout out new places and maybe go to a fall spookery at Camp Thunder or an event at Lawhorn, um, uh, maybe down at uh, Lumpkin, maybe up at Sydney Dew, because there are places where you may find that you just like being in a new place and you may be an ambassador by saying, oh, you got to check out Bird Adams Woodruff and Alatoona because those places rock, no offense. Uh, but so be an ambassador, check out new places and don't be bored. Just for the record, I endorse that statement. I'm okay. all for diversifying your events. Get out there and mainly scout. There we go. So for PAC planning meetings, Invite everybody to give their ideas, invite everybody to attend. But if only a few people show up, that's okay too, because you don't need any uh, minimum number to come up with a great calendar of activities. One or two people could do that. Ideally, though, you're going to want to be open and inviting. And even if somebody says, I can't make the meeting, but here are some ideas of places to go, that can be a huge help, especially if you can use that to be a hook to convert them to being a more active participant in your den and your pack. That way you can help frame your planning conference. If you have good results from your survey, uh, if you are able to narrow to some choices from the ideas people have given you, you can get to decisions a lot faster and then address other elements that every pack has got to look at, like who's gonna lead the events, what open uh, leader roles do we have? How do we want to deal with den meetings, budgets, fundraising, and other issues that we will start to discuss in a second? So fill your calendar, especially when you get those monthly uh, big events. Share that so that families can get excited about what you're going to do. And if you get it out early, if you need to make an adjustment because there is some holiday you didn't know about, you have time to get it fixed before you are too far gone in the year. Now, pack meetings are a thing. And some people will ask, well, wait a second, you really haven't stressed that. Didn't Journey to Excellence require holding some number of pack meetings every year? And the answer is it did uh, once upon a time, but no more. There are requirements for Journey to Excellence for pack activities but not for PAC meetings. So you are doing perfectly fine as a Cub Scout PAC if you have a PAC activity schedule that starts say in August with a pool party, maybe at a bike ride, a hike in September, a camp out in October, a service project in November, maybe uh, you have a holiday party in December, do a Pinewood Derby in January, go scouting for food uh, and scout Sunday in February, go fishing in March, do another camp out in April, have your blue and gold in May to celebrate at the end of the year, maybe do kites and rockets in June, have a fun field day in July. You're fine even if you never have a PAC meeting. Now, at this point, I am obligated under the bylaws of the Boy Scouts of America to say I am all in favor of PAC meetings if they are fun. I like awards and cheers and skits and songs and walk-ons. So if you like PAC meetings and they are fun, do them. But if they're a struggle and not fun, consider maybe not. Maybe do more activities and field trips because you can easily do awards and announcements uh, on a field trip, at a pool party, at a cookout, and um, or have a campfire because that's when awards, cheers, skits, songs, and walk-ons are the most fun. Bottom line, did I mention fun is important? So look at activities. 
Is there enough on there that's exciting and appealing to kids and families to return to your pack and to cause new families to come and join you? Now, dens. Belonging to a den is a key method. How often do they meet? Is it once a week, every other week, once a month? And the answer is, those answers all work if it works for your den families and leaders. Uh, once upon a time, the BSA said in their materials that dens meet weekly. And then they realized that's really hard for a lot of den leaders to do. And now they say most dens meet every other week. And that's probably right, although I know plenty of dens where they meet once a month, probably for a little bit longer, maybe 90 minutes if they're in one of the four older grades. And then they have a pack activity where they're getting together, camp out, bike ride, pool party, what have you. And that works. And that can work better, especially if you're trying to engage parents to be leaders, because if you have a meeting once a month that's super fun, people will look forward to it. If you try to meet once a week and don't have enough leadership or engaged leadership or fun leadership, you're going to have people who are bored. You're going to have leaders who are burned out. You will have leaders who will quit. And if your one possible leader quits because they have to meet once a week, that means there's no Cub Scouting for that grade. And so you would be better off if you'd started it once a month because it's easier to go from once a month to twice a month than it is to try to maintain an every week cadence. So when you're planning, figure out what will work for you and your chartered organization and your meeting spaces. Maybe you every den meets at the same time in one place. Maybe dens pick out their own time and date and place or places to scout out. You know, for example, uh, I encourage lions and tigers, if they can do a tour of playgrounds, and visit different playgrounds during the course of the school year, those kids are going to have a ball and they will have plenty of great places that they remember going that they're going to want to go back to. Uh, maybe you're going to have some families who can meet on weekdays only, others who can only meet on weekends. Be ashamed to lose those who can only meet on weekends if you say that the only time dens can meet is on weekdays. And even if you can't get into the school or church, on the weekend when the den wants to get together, they have other options like going to parks or meeting in somebody's backyard. That can be done. There's nothing wrong with that. And sports teams, that can be a conflict. People will say, well, we can't, uh, you know, we can't meet on certain days because that's when the soccer team plays. Well, maybe the instead of looking at that as the soccer team is beating us, see if the soccer team will join you. Could that sports team also be a den in your pack where you adjust your den schedule uh, while they're in season, and maybe you have short den meetings every other week after practice or after games. Because as long as you snack those kids up, they're probably willing to have more fun, even if some of the parents are tired. So use that at, not as an obstacle, but as an opportunity if you can get other families in line. And we know that parents are standing around the edge of the field talking with other parents. So maybe you can get them on board and find out who will lead them if you all do Cub Scouting, because this doesn't work unless we have leaders. And I wish it was easy to say, you know, how you're going to get leaders. We, you know, don't have a, a simple, easy solution, but we do have lots of ways in different methods, like how to communicate with groups and one-on-one, -on -one, uh, how to use recognition to encourage people to step up and be leaders, how to right-size your jobs and your programs so that you can have small jobs that people can say yes to as opposed to seeing giant jobs that will make people run away because that's too much for any one person to do. And while there is no pack in the world that will ever use all the 80 plus ways that we have on our uh, how to recruit leaders page, you will find something on there that will work for you and work for somebody in your path to convince them to cross over and become a helper and a leader in your pack. I guarantee it. Uh, one of the ways to do that is to give them ways where they can see how they can share. We have created a new version of a skill survey for parents to complete as they come into your pack, 
where they can just check off what they know about, what they might be willing to help lead or teach youth. Now, granted, some parents are going to go, I have no skills whatsoever, but some parents are going to look at this and go, I remember yo-yos, that was cool. Or, you know, I like flying discs, or I am so into, uh, you know, skateboards, I just wish I had more cartilage. That could be somebody who could get involved doing that in your pack. And if you don't ask, you'll never know. And if they don't fill it out, then talk to them and see what they know. We know you had a Tony Hawk skateboard. (laughs) (laughs) I had one. (laughs) And and when you do get somebody on board and they say, hey, I'll help lead a den meeting, we will be sure to supplement what's coming out as new program materials uh, this spring and into the summer to be sure that where there are gaps where we can be more helpful to our parents and leaders that we put that out on the Cub Scout advancement page. Uh, Cause you can almost guarantee that we will probably need a mixed dem solution that allows uh, easier delivery by leaders when they have a den that is a mix of tigers and wolves and wolves and bears and so on. So I anticipate that will be a project that gets, gets launched uh, come April or May. Now, let me address another, I think, unfortunate misconception. There are some people who think if it's not in your grades handbook, you can't do it at all. Like you might say, looking at the upcoming program, that since there's only one adventure in Cub Scouting about pets, the third grade critter care loop, critter care loop, that nobody other than third graders can do it. And I think that's missing an opportunity because if you have a first grade den that is really into pets and they want to show off their dog or cat or fish or lizard, make that part of your program. Uh, Because if they really love their pet as a first grader uh, and they earn the critter care loop because they did the requirements, it's just a loop. When they get to third grade, hopefully they'll still love pets And then it can be the uh, loop that they earn that earns them an elective for the bear rank. And if for some reason they don't like pets when they're in the third grade, well, hopefully they'll find something else. But I hope they still love pets uh, for all their life. So just because there's something that's in another handbook, if that's really what your kids are interested in and it's safe, so, you know, no pocket knives for kindergarten, first or second grade, go for it. And if you want easier than that, the fun, simple, easy activities page on the Atlanta Area Council website has plenty of activities in different categories where if you click on one of those boxes, it's gonna take you to a list of activities with how-to information. It'll take you to pages, you know, you pick a topic, arts and crafts, uh, you know, outdoor ideas, cooking that will take you to pages that then open up more pages where if you are trying to find something for you or other parents to lead, bang, it's going to be there and you can deliver that as part of the fun that you do in your den, in your pack, and that you can give to uh, other parents who are wanting to get engaged finally to help their kids and the kids' den in their Cub Scout pack. Because we do want to grow. We do want to recruit new families, and that's why our guide to recruiting is a guide to Cub Scout family recruiting, and that's why we give a lot of resources so that you can have more uh, kids join your pack and get more leaders in your pack and have a more uh, attractive program in your pack. Oh, now the good stuff. We're going to talk about budgeting because everybody needs to do that. Somebody's got to pay for this program. Budgeting basics are pretty simple. You're going to be led by a treasurer who pretty darn well should be a registered background check uh, leader who will figure out what your costs ought to be, figure out uh, recommendations for collection and fundraising, and certainly be on top of accounting for it. 
And by accounting, I mean lowercase accounting. They are accounting to your families for the money that you're taking in so that families can see that their money where, where they thought it would be. Now, expenses that must be paid to do Cub Scouting basically boil down to your unit recharter fee in one way or another, youth and adult leader registration fees. Uh, there are plenty of other things that most good packs are going to include in the budget, but let's start with national fees. Uh, effective in April, those are going up five bucks each, youth and adult, although council supported or scout reach units are gonna stay at the current level. But the good news for joining is that there's no more uh, new youth member joining fee. The registration fees for youth and adults will still run for 12 months from whenever you signed up. And there are gonna be options about how that renewal occurs. So let me focus on that very briefly here. BSA is calling it auto renewal, but they give two routes. And the first route, sort of the default route, is family pay or self pay for unit leaders. You might like this because the unit leader could sit back and doesn't have to track collection of those BSA fees. It doesn't have to get routed through the PAC bank account and individuals will be responsible for their own renewals. And everyone knows that will work, uh, but you do know you're gonna wanna be sure that your members are actually up to date with that because some families are gonna be confused. They'll think, well, we paid PAC program fees for 2024. So certainly we've renewed with the BSA since we renewed with the unit. And some families are likely to be confused by or just ignore an email that's coming from the BSA. This is also difficult if you wanna have your PAC program fees reimburse adult leaders for their $65 uh, tax on being a leader. There is a unit pay option where, and I, we think this is going to be very advantageous for units because the unit can continue to be the one point of contact for renewal by collecting not just PAC local program fees or dues, but collecting the BSA fees as part of that at renewal. That makes it easier to pay for adult leaders because you're going to be on top as a one point of contact. You're gonna have fewer unexpected drops, but you will need uh, starting later this year and then on into future years, you'll need to track and pay for early auto renewals because Instead of everybody renewing at the end of the calendar year, people are going to be renewing 12 months after they first signed up. So beyond that, what might a PAC pay for? Handbooks, while they're gonna be free for new signups, you might wanna be sure that the returning scouts have handbooks so that they can participate. Everybody likes some bling, so badges, loops, and pins are usually part of the uh, PAC budget program, maybe you pay for Scout Life, maybe you don't. Uh, you may have training costs, admin costs, maybe you buy t-shirts and provide those to everyone, provide Pinewood Derby cars, provide some funding for a decent blue and gold banquet. So you could have maybe $40 of extra PAC stuff that you pay for. You could have $140 and really have a full year of events that are paid for, there's no right answer on that. Uh, for revenues, you're gonna have to collect money from families, either you know annual, monthly installment in some way, or and you also can get it from council approved fundraising. Camp cards, popcorn sales, automatically approved. Others need plans and approval through your district executive, mainly to be sure that you're not just out begging for money or doing something that harms the image of scouting, so no casino nights. And that will help you offset pack dues and ideally make scouting affordable. And so balancing the budget, you've got to do some projections on not only your expenses, but how big you think your pack is going to be. So like that $100 unit fee at charter renewal, it's only one buck a scout if you have 100 scouts, but it's 10 bucks per with 10 scouts. So You've got to project what you're going to spend money on and then come up with your per scout cost to operate your pack. And if you have no fundraiser, your per scout cost is your annual dues. If you do have a fundraiser, 
then you've got to get the calculator back out, estimate your total per scout collections and come up with your debt net dues number. And some PACs will consider having some amount of the fundraising go to individual scout accounts so that the scouts who are really putting in the hours at popcorn sales and camp card sales are getting uh, more of the benefit of that and helping reduce their overall costs. As we get to the end, some of you may wonder, is there a patch for that? And yes, there is a journey to excellence patch. And you may wonder, well, you didn't start with that. If we follow the ideas in this last hour, are we going to score? And the answer is, yeah, probably, because you get guaranteed points in category one by just sharing a calendar and a budget. You add a planning event, you've got silver. You do a parent orientation and get people connected on Scout Book, you've got gold. Recruiting, you do a recruiting event, have an updated Be a Scout pin, you're scoring points. And uh, did I mention that any fun pack or den event can be a recruiting event, so go for it. Uh, category four, converting your fifth graders to Scouts BSA. Have two events with a troop. You should do that. You should have at least two events where you are participating with a troop. So you're going to get points for that. Activities, please. You do one activity, you're scoring points. You do two, you're getting more points. So you're going to score in activities and please do more than what they have in JTE. Service projects, you're also going to get score there if you're doing advancement because there's going to be service projects in advancement. And for volunteer opportunities, Category 9, just sharing a help wanted list is going to get you points. And then if you recruit more people and develop a succession plan, your goal. Other categories, uh, you're probably going to get points uh, depending on you know, how you deliver the year. If you have a fun program, you should probably retain 62 to 70 percent. And uh, if you get parents helping, you're gold there. Advancement, if you give people the tools to lead their dens, you're probably going to score there. But again, that depends on delivery. Outdoor activities requires a blue train leader, which you darn sure ought to have. And 51% of your Cub Scouts have participated in an overnight activity. More of both gets you more points. And then trained leadership. Uh, hopefully, your leaders will not be slackers on this and will get you some points in that category as well. And with that, 758, we can take questions. And Ben, do you want to add anything? Uh, do any uh, corrections here while we're still taping? What I am going to do is um, I would like to just make some, some clarity and then offer for people who want to stay behind if you want to talk about uh, any questions that's been covered. Uh, but I know I, I will be available to talk specifically about the new membership renewal uh, piece if you have questions about that. Uh, the one thing I'll say before we um, cut the recording is that with that new membership renewal process, there is an option for PACs to opt out of the automatic renewal. And the Atlanta Air Council is in the in the um, first stages of finding out what do we think is the best way. Uh, and we're just researching, talking to other councils and uh, pulling a task force together to brainstorm on that and come up with the best solution so we can support you as PACs. But I also value your input. So if you have it, please give it to me. Um, on what you would prefer, or just any questions you have. But with that, before I turn the recording off, just want to say thanks again for everybody. Thanks, Bert, for the energy and time that you've put into this. I know there's a thousand more things behind this slide deck on the webpage. And I know that Bert is always willing to connect with you if you uh, want to have questions or talk to him offline. But uh, before I head then forward, thanks again. Appreciate it. And I'll stop the recording right now. And I, and I join in thanking all of you PAC leaders because God bless you. I'm not the one uh, taking our kids up to Woodruff this weekend. God bless the PAC and DEN leaders in my PAC for getting that done. Uh, enjoy the ride while you can, because I did. Uh, and let's uh, let's have more scouting. <laughs>